Due to some camera issues, the first 30 seconds to a minute of my presentation was missed. So I thought I'd recap it so that you can understand the rest. I tell my remarks, the purpose and meaning of the Book of Life, an exegetical and etymological theory. Now, I used what's called the Toulmin model. This was developed by a man named Stephen Toulmin. He was a British philosopher who dealt with quantifying moral reasoning. This model is an argument map which helps you understand and organize an effective argument. The first element is a claim. It's a significant statement which you are trying to prove. For example, I am a U.S. citizen. The second element is data, some kind of evidence that your claim is true. Following the example, I was born in Texas. The third part is the warrant. The warrant is a very basic connection between the data and the claim. A person born in Texas is a U.S. citizen. And these three elements make up the basic Toolman model. So with that, let's jump into the actual presentation. I recognize that complex arguments required more elements to his model, and thus he added them. We'll be using these elements as well. The next element is the backing. What if you don't believe my warrant? Well, then I will point out the legal code, section 496-7, that says that someone born in Texas is a legal citizen of the United States. Then you have a rebuttal. A rebuttal, you take some common argument and refute it, refute it, either by showing that it's insignificant or by showing that it is incorrect. And finally, you have a qualifier. The qualifier tells us how strong or under what conditions the argument operates. And these six elements make the advanced Toolman model. Now, since my presentation is on the Book of Life, we're going to go ahead and use this map to uh, describe my theory and my argument. So first, we have the claim. I claim that the Book of Life is a document owing its origins to the pre-mortal life, which contains the testimonies of every individual who has lived and who will live upon the earth. Furthermore, it's a chief legal authority and judgment. So, here we have, um, oh, sorry, uh, as part of the claim, being created in the pre-mortal life. So, as, um, imagine being in the Council of Heaven. We're all there, and we know that we um, had our testimonies, and that we also had the atonement previous uh, in the pre-mortal life. So, um, in order to come to Earth, we had to exercise those. What if we recorded our testimonies, and all of those individual testimonies were bound in one specific volume, designated as the Book of Life, which would remain in Heaven as a record? Or maybe it was like an affidavit, some universal standard stock testimony, such as, Jesus is the Christ, our Heavenly Father is our God, and we will follow His commandments, and we will come to earth to receive a body and use our time wisely. And then we all signed our name to this exact same testimony. Either of these, either way, it was created in the pre-mortal life. And thus, when our names are in the book, when we come to, pre when we come to mortal life, our names are already written in, and therefore they, can't be blot they can only be blotted out from here on. So, furthermore, there's an implicit testimony in the use of the atonement. By using the atonement to become clean or uh, to overcome Satan, in order to access it, we have to have faith in it. We have to believe in it. Therefore, we're testifying of it when we use it. Um, the pre-mortal life is also a weighing mechanism in, the, uh, in order to come to life and in order to come to eternal life. Um, and these, if you re remain in the book of life, then you continue onward. Kind of like in Abraham 3.25, um, if you kept your first estate, you had a second estate added on to um, we also know that by coming to earth, by gaining a mortal body, we could sin and transgress, and thus have our name be blotted out of the book of life, um, to progress no longer. So, next is our data. This is going to be the exegetical part of my um, presentation. We're going to go through a couple of scriptures uh, to prove my claim. So here, we have Revelation 7.18. Oh, sorry, I'm getting used to this one. Um, and okay, here we have Satan, uh, the beast. Um, we're watching him, Satan and the beast, his third. Uh, this is at, at the end of the millennium. They're going into perdition, and us that dwell on the earth are going to wonder whose names were not were not written into the book of life from the foundation of the world. This tells us two things: one, the book was written 
and the founda- before the foundation of the world, and second, that Satan and his one-third were not written into the book. Only those who were righteous and wanted to follow our Heavenly Father's plan were in the book of life. Um, in the next scripture, uh, Revelation 3, 5, He that overcometh, the Lord says, I will not blot out his name. I will not blot. The Lord is not saying, I will write his name into the book, but I will just not remove it. So, here we go as well. Um, in the pre-mortal life, it was a weighing mechanism. Here in Revelation 12, we see that uh, he's talking about the war in heaven. John's talking about the war in heaven. And he sees um, Michael and his angels overcame Satan by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Here we see that these individuals are accessing the atonement as well as testifying. And these two elements are what create um, our spot, our place in the book of life. Um, it's kind of, you can understand it as like a threshold ritual. Something that we have to do in order to cross to the next stage in our lives. In order to come to mortal life, we have to be in the book. Um, here, we know that if you sin, you get blotted out of the book. This is a fairly simple concept. Um, this scripture here specifically talks about how Satan and his third um, were, uh, when they turned away from the Lord, they were blotted out of the book. But there's numerous instances throughout Old Testament, New Testament, Book of Mormon, DNC, where an individual has sinned, the Lord says, um, if you don't repent, you shall be blotted out. Fairly simple. Sin leads to being blotted out. Um, and finally, this last aspect of the data is the use and the final judgment. So here in DNC 128, Joseph Smith is quoting from Le- Revelation 20, where he sees the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened. This other book. All these books were opened, and one more was opened, which was the Book of Life. And they were judged out of those things which were written in books. Joseph Smith goes on to say, and the book, which was the Book of Life, is the record which is kept in heaven. The principle agreed precisely with the doctrine which is commanded you, that all your recordings may be recorded in. So this record lies in heaven and is what we're going to be judged out of. Um, and the second element, the next verse, this is I just wanted to point this out. Um, he goes on to say that the books which we shall be judged of when we die um, contain our works. And it says, works, whether they themselves have attended to the ordinances in their own person. This, Joseph Smith draws a connection between the works and between ordinances. Faith is dead without works. Faith is dead without ordinances. We know that ordinances are required for salvation, and therefore those ordinances which we enter into in this mortal life would be part of that final judgment in the book of life. So here, in the last part, these are what happens to the people who are not found in the book of life. Those who are not in the book of life are cast in the lake of fire, and their portion, they shall not have a portion among the believers, cut asunder, and there should be wailing and gnashing of teeth. So you definitely want to be in the book of life. <laughs> so, the final part to our basic argument is the warrant. This is going to be a very simple statement. Definitions. The definition of a record is to reserve or make a reservation for. Now, in Hugh Nibley's uh, The Message of the Joseph Smith Papyri, an Egyptian endowment, he explains that uh, the conception of the endowment is not that um, you're reserving or, or staking out a spot for yourself in heaven but that you already have that spot reserved. You're already in the Book of Life. The endowment is just to give you um, the knowledge necessary to protect you in order to, re- to return and receive that spot that you already have. Um, also, as interesting is um, an information of a private nature, sin, what you do in private, whether that's service, sin, um, and life. I really like this definition, a sharp flavor. Because that's really what life should be. But it also, it also goes on that a substance um, in good condition. So when we're staying in good condition, we have our life in good condition. Continue on. Um, 